Dude, that was crazy. I feel like that's what I'm meant to do. Like I can do like 600 watts and then chill and 600 and chill. There's just those like techy times for like two minutes at 500. It's like, my legs haven't done that in a while. Sweet race. Yeah, yeah. good job. All right, it's um, like 12 hours away from race time, not even that. It's the night before the race for me. I'm racing the day before Paula here in Ibiza. Uh, it's been it's been a pretty wild week. <laughs> As soon as we crossed the finish line in St. Anthony's, which was a duathlon, I went straight back to the hotel room. I started immediately trying to pack up our bikes and two bags for the trip to Ibiza. Paula ran back and accepted her trophy for winning. We grabbed a quick snack on the way out the door and Sam drove us to the airport. Uh, we then had uh, like 13 hours of travel to get here. Got here in the afternoon, tried to stay awake until bedtime, and uh, that just felt like the world's longest day. Yeah, we're open until 3.30 a.m. <laughs> it's like, okay. You're almost open till tomorrow's <laughs> breakfast. So did you say they open at 6? Yeah. So they're closed for three hours yeah. a day. <sighs> he was laughing. He was like, oh, we're almost open for 24 hours a day. That's crazy. Ibiza, Ibiza impressions so far? How are we feeling? How are you doing? Um, kind of like Flagstaff. I'm warming up and I'm warming up to it. <laughs> All right. The more bakeries we go to, the more I'm warming up to it. Eric's gonna build our bikes, and then Eric's gonna go to the mountain bike course, and I'll probably ride with Holly later if she gets her bike. Sweet. Easy day. All right, I'm solo now. Uh, this is kind of like. Um... We're at this race together, but we're doing totally different races, obviously. So I've got about a 23 minute drive across, literally to the other side of the island, where Cross Tri Worlds is happening. I just tried to make a GPS course of the bike because one they have online is 404 not found. And I'm just gonna go explore and hopefully try to figure out this course. I'm pretty psyched on it. It's gonna be, driving around here is pretty fun. It's a cool spot. I come to stuff like this and and my goal all along coming to a new race especially this race was to get as much cool scenery as I possibly could and really show off the town that we're in 
you know, we go for bike rides and we go for runs and we get ourselves to the pool or the beach to swim. You get to experience a lot of that along the way. And a lot of the times swimming, bike, you know, biking or running is the best way to really, the best speed to take in a new place. Alright, we are two days out from the race. I just got back from another mountain bike course recon. And uh, Paul and I are gonna go run part of her course, I think. We got like 30 minutes with some pickups. Pretty chill. Then uh, I think we're gonna go swim and then she's got media and massage and all sorts of fun stuff. So bad. Hot news is that this is uh, the water is actually kind of cold, and this should be a wetsuit swim. But uh, we didn't bring wetsuits down to the water. So we're just gonna see how long we last. We'll shake out swimming. How are you finding the coffee in Spain? Listen for the block? Maybe. Very milky. It's okay, it's like a five out of ten. Mucho, mucho leche? Yeah. The bakery stuff is good. We should get something for later. That's what the baguette was for, is it gone? It's not gone. We can always get more. We did some damage. The bike and the run course um, for me here in Ibiza are really exciting, like good-ish trails strung together by streets and people's backyards almost is what it feels like. Dirt's interesting, it's very chalky, it's like dust, but then there's a ton of rock. It kind of feels like you can slip out on any corner. If I can make it to the end of the day without crashing, I think that would be, well, I'll be surprised. 21K bike-ish and a 6K run. Uh, you know, you're running across beaches, you're running across lava rock, fun, 
very fun course. I had a lot of fun just previewing it and I'm looking forward to racing it tomorrow. Hopefully I feel better than I did in St. Anthony's. No matter what though, I'm gonna go for it. I'm like, Did you get six? I think so. I knew fifth was like, I could see him. Yeah. I think I brought back like maybe 15 seconds. Uh, hard to tell. I was wondering how far back it was from the front, like two minutes, a minute 30. Probably something like that, two, three. Where'd you just like a lap of the bike? Your day climbs so fucking hard. It's bonkers. I got, yeah. we I got. you're right there on the first lap, like third, I think. Yeah, dude, I led the whole first lap. But like we got we got through like the technical climbing stuff we we're going like 500 watts up the road and it was like slowly getting dropped and everybody was just like Ooh, just like gassed off so i just like slingshot and went past everybody and just like pegged it all the way till the single track and i think like sitting in front like we controlled a little bit yeah but then like just as we got to the technical climb like i was dropping people on the descending but then like we get to like just like roots and rocks and stuff climbing up and it's just bonkers. He's not on the so hard. I just feel. It felt good. Dude, that was crazy. I feel like that's what I'm meant to do. Like I can do like 600 watts and then chill and 600 and chill. There's just those like tech times for like two minutes at 500. It's like my legs haven't done that in a while. Sweet race. Yeah, yeah. good job. I feel like with some specific Training. Training for that this summer, like I can hang with those guys. That's sweet. And no wetsuit, maybe? Yeah, what's no wetsuit would have been a huge difference. Yeah. That was pretty sick. <laughs> Eric had a great race yesterday, so that really helped. Just kind of lighten the mood in terms of like, the pressure's off a bit, he had a good time. But all week I've felt a little bit tired, a little bit flat, a little bit not confident in myself. Looking at the start list, I was thinking I could come 15th on a great day. Like, the most crazy start list of all time. Realize I found my path away from home, riding the roads that's been paved along. So racing that caliber field in May is really, really hard mentally. It's not that I'm not in race shape or whatever. It was just like, it's easy to get caught up in that when you're seeing all these super, super high caliber athletes around. But when race day comes, I kind of just get into like process mode. I get to go down to the check my bike in, see my friends. Like, I feel like I'm almost too good of friends with some of the people I race, like Holly and Ellie. and. Um, it feels very comforting to me to be around them. water got super choppy between when the men raced and when we raced. So it was like kind of turbulent and hectic out there. I just found feet. I knew it was Ashley's, Ashley and Ellie kind of in front of me. And after the first lap, because we came out of the water after the first lap, I could see a lot of bodies ahead of me. But that's not unusual for me. I'm pretty used to being kind of mid-pack or mid-front pack. 
on the swims. Um, and my second lap is always better than my first lap once there's more clear water and it's less fighting. Um, got on the bike and my plan for this race was to ride hard and ride well because that's my strength, but also be a bit tactical and not just carry a bunch of people up to the front of the race. Um, my favorite part of the day actually, I think might have been Race Ranger. It was a hugely um, race changing device. And it basically, it's a blinker sensor that goes on each bike and it shows different colors when you're within the drafting zone, blinks at you when you're too close. So it really helped everyone keep 20 meters fairly. And I think that did change the dynamics of the race. And it just was a visual cue for all of us um, of how close we were allowed to be. So it worked great. I don't think there were any flaws or faults in it. Um, and it should definitely be used in all races going forward, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, anytime someone came past me on the bike, I would kind of just sit at 20 meters and be okay with that, even though I felt like I could have gone back past them, just because I knew that races like this do turn into a run battle a lot of the time. And although I don't run as fast as Anne and Ashley and Tamara, I knew that I can run pretty well. And if I hooked myself on the bike, I would suffer on the run like I did at Oceanside. So I played it a bit conservatively, but still came into transition second behind Lucy, who was a minute ahead. And then just, uh, almost like expected myself to feel like shit on the run because I felt like shit in St. Anthony's and I felt like shit in Oceanside. So I thought that was just like what I would be like. But I actually felt pretty smooth and pretty fine and was just like keeping a high cadence, never felt like I was redlining. Um, maybe was a bit complacent, like didn't really race really hard. I was more just like, I'm running well, I'm not getting tired, there's a lot of running to go, so I just kind of stayed at one pace and was, was solo for a lot of it. Um, but I think that's part of altitude is like, I never felt like I was out of breath or panicked, but I didn't really have like another gear. So I was a little bit stuck in one gear, but that gear was fine, it wasn't like too slow. So um, yeah, I finished fifth. Every place in these races is like so, much money difference, so I was thinking about that a little bit, but it was not even about the money, it's more just like having a race that exceeded what I thought I would do. Last night going to bed I thought a top 10 would be like insanely hard and a crazy success, so to get top 5 is way better than I thought I would do, and I'm happy about that. It's still only May, so it's early, there's a lot of racing to go this season, it's not like I can be totally... Uh, relaxed and have an off season. I think I still need to keep building and keep putting pressure on and keep training well, but I've been healthy. I've been, emotions a bit up and down, but once we're back in bend, I think that'll resolve itself and uh, definitely a confidence booster after the disappointment of Oceanside. So um, yeah, thanks to everyone who cheered and watched and to Eric for uh, being there all day. Uh, yeah, next we are traveling home, which is a huge amount of flying. Not even home, we're going back to Phoenix Flagstaff to pick up Flynn, who's been having the vacation of his life. And then we'll carry on to Bend, which is a basically like a 17 hour flight day and then a 17 hour drive, which is terrible. But traveling is less horrible when you've had like some success in the purpose of what the trip was. If Eric and I both came here and had terrible races, the travel would be like that much worse. But knowing that it was somewhat purposeful and successful and meaningful um, makes the travel a little less daunting. So we'll see, TBD. Talk to us in Phoenix. I'll tell you how we feel.